Hey, I got fucking wasted last night. <sighs> oh, I had quite a day at work. Um, it was Jenny's birthday last night, my friend Jenny from high school. So we went out, and I uh, had a couple... We went out to the, the Rainbow Club in Hollywood over by the Roxy on the Strip, on Sunset Strip. And I uh, had a couple beers... <laughs> Three beers, I think, and then then I switched to, to um, Captain and Coke, and then I don't I don't know. Well, I remember it, but like, I, actually, I mean, I had some good conversation, but still. But then today I had to work at ten, so I got up at nine thirty and just hopped in the shower, and I mean, I felt wrecked. And at work, it wasn't too bad. The hangover kind of subsided. But I noticed something new. I, I haven't really noticed this before because I haven't really been living this, what I've been doing the last five months with, you, with video and myself and just opening up and all that. Like it's, it's given me a new perspective that I kind of forget what it was like to be drunk a lot. Because the alcohol it just affects your body pretty consistent, like it's still affecting me. And uh, I, uh, it's so it's so powerful. It really leads us towards the physical uh, indulging in the physical reality. What was happening was like I would know I noticed that it was like utilizing the dark side. What I was doing because I was I was like an like an animal. I would just I would walk around and look at people and I was looking at everyone. I wasn't afraid of people. And I I caught myself saying at one point I didn't catch myself, but I noticed that I said out loud, I feel great <coughs> as if to manifest it. Whereas I, which is nothing wrong with that, but like a week ago, I would have said, This is an amazing moment. And everyone around me would have experienced it and felt it. But today, in that moment, I said, I feel great. I feel great. Self-empowering. That's the dark side. That's the, the ego. And it's powerful. And it can get you what you want. And I noticed Terry was tending bar. And at one point, I said, hey, Terry, can I get a, a kid's strawberry orange juice? And he said, in a minute, because he was doing something. And I said, I want it now! Like, joking, but I said it like that. And he brought it immediately. He brought it over and set it down. And... I realized, he didn't, he didn't even hear me, but I manifested it with anger. I said, I want it now, and it got, and it appeared. And I got it, and I realized that. So I said that to him, and I said, dude, this is what just happened. And he said, I didn't even hear you, man. And I said, I know. And he looked at me, and then we, a little later in the day, it was like, it just, it was a very kind of tension-filled day for me, so it like mirrored out and around me, and then, but then, okay, so then later in the day, he was he was like uh, polishing a glass behind the bar, and he had he had given this these people uh, some wine, and he had got kind of got them set up, and then they went and sat down at a table, and I I took over everything, but he already got them all set up, so they had their drinks, they had everything, and it was oh it was the guy who created the Sopranos, I don't remember his name David something David Gray, David Gray David something some guy he's cool, and his family was cool, I think it was his family. Some of them were his family. But anyway, I was like, yeah, it's great. They had a bottle of wine on the table, and I said, yeah, it's great. But Terry, Terry, but Terry did all the work. And as I said that, Terry was polishing glass, and it just, he, it just shattered. The glass just cracked and broke. He broke it when I said that. Terry did all the work. Instantly, he broke the glass as if he was becoming empowered or he didn't... The, it didn't like hearing it. Something about that phrase, Terry did all the work, caused him to to change. There was a change and he broke the glass. And I was like, dude. And I, I said, man, because I said that. And he was like, oh. Yeah. It was amazing. It, I, because I was seeing these things. And okay, earlier in the day, um, I felt like ass, and I and it was just slow. It was slow at work, and it was interesting. And I thought I kind of like that it's slow. 
and uh, throughout the day, I started becoming more aware of what what was happening. Kind of like the alcohol was subsiding, and I was becoming more conscious of everything. And I started to become aware, and I and I was like, oh, okay, so. But then what happened was a bunch of people started coming to the restaurant later in the day. Like a lot of people. We got packed. We had a line. And I realized that I think that aspects of the consciousness were drawn to the conflict that I was feeling. It's very It's a very self-centered view of the world, but I think it really works that way. When we create interesting something interesting, people come to be around us. And that's the way that humanity works. I think it's beyond what we see and hear and, and, and taste and touch and feel. I think it's the aspects of the consciousness are drawn to each other or are drawn it's drawn to itself in a way so like I was having this intense conflict about the power of the physical reality of indulging in it of getting drunk fucking get, getting the things I want saying I want it now and having it and it's possible and, and you can do that whenever you want but it's dangerous because I see that it's I see the danger because what happens then is it just becomes addictive and it's self-consuming. It's the whole time that it was happening, whenever I would manifest something um, in that kind of way, I want it now, I, I was getting things that I wanted and it was working, I was making eye contact and people were looking at me, well I was gonna say women, but people, and, but I noticed like I'd be shaking, I, I, I would, stuff would break or I would shake as I carried a, a glass because it was like, the body was trying to hold it together like a car when you drive really really fast it just starts to shake and that's what was happening and it was like I was utilizing the dark side of consciousness or the I was utilizing something some aspect of the physical reality like getting what I want and it's so normal I've done it my entire life I never realized it but when I do it it causes tension and it's ultimately the tension that destroys us So the key is to find the balance between the two because you can't live in a state of open awareness all the time. Society will reject you. I don't believe you can. I believe that there is a balance. Uh, we can function as a whole, as a group, and do things and get things done and get the things we want, you know, literally. And anything that we want, cell phone, the things we want we can get, but to so there's a balance. You can't do that all the time. You can't live a state of, in a state of openness and understanding all the time either. I mean, you can. But I don't think it's as beneficial. I think what happens is then you start to have this experience, this individual experience, but people stop relating to you because... Or they, they, watch, you hap they watch it happen in you and then they want to be around it and they gather to it and then a cult is formed. But... No, 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 no. It's way too destructive. It's, it's, it, either extreme is destructive. So there's a balance. It's okay to get drunk. Sometimes. It's okay to get wasted. It's okay to use the physical reality. It's okay to fuck someone. Anyone. Well, that's a little extreme, because then I was like, adult fucking a child. And I don't, it's not that it's wrong. There's no wrong. It's just not. It's aggressive, and it's gonna cause a lot of chaos in the people's lives, unless they completely, openly accept everything. Which, if that's possible, I guess you can do anything, but it's still destructive. So maybe, okay, I take that extreme example, and I see the destructiveness of sex or aggression, and I think like, what is balance? Is balance removing that? So is balance actually no aggression? This is what I'm torn with. Like, I, part of me wants to believe that that's true, that, that you let go, no alcohol, no drugs, no violence, no aggression, no sex, none of that crap. It's all a big distraction from open connection. But then I see like it's such an extreme way to live and if you do it, it can happen fast in our, in our minds. But when we do it, other people are like, whoa, and they see it and they don't quite, they're not doing it. Well, maybe, maybe they start to mirror it. And it's just a sacrifice that you make as a person. You say, I'm going to let go of all the things. 
I'm going to let go of all, the, of all the things that are fun and just exist and allow people to grow from that and sacrifice my body. I've been thinking about sex. I was talking to Autumn at work today, too. He's my buddy, and he has sex with guys. And I was saying, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm definitely interested in having sex with guys. I think about it. I've been thinking about it. And, like, my body wants it. But I see the destructive nature of sex in general. And I can only imagine if I started having sex with guys that it's like shooting up fucking heroin. I'm just going to want it. And it's, it's, a, it's a diversion. It's not... They say it's like, people are saying it's like, you know, you do it and you get to an even greater point of connection with someone. If you're connecting with them and then you have sex with them, it's even greater connection. And I see that, but I think that we can get to that place without the sex, with eye contact. I know we can. But then I'm like, okay, so we make eye contact, make eye contact, we get to that place. Then we have sex, it takes us to a new place. And that's the danger of sex, the addictive nature of it is that people want to use it to experience the connection. But I think I'll try it. I'm not af I'm afraid it's the fear, you know? It's I've I've lived my life like with a structure. Like I'm I've been told, okay, guys, men are with women and then they have children and they also they get married before they live together. I mean, it's how extreme you can make it as extreme as you want, but it's like there's structure. It's there's no structure. It's like the reason we're here is to understand everything. I didn't smoke any weed today either. I'm recovering from this hangover. I'm fe I feel very visceral. It really is like the dark side. I keep saying, calling it the dark side, and it's more like indulging in. Oh, and you know what I've realized? Like women want this. This, this, what I'm experiencing right now. Women want this. They understand this. They connect well to this. The open, like, zen experience seems like women aren't as interested in it. No, well, it seems like everybody's interested in it, but in a different way. Like, people have a detached, uh, enjoyment of it. But when, when I act like this, when I give over to this aspect of who I am, or this, this part of humanity, then people want to literally be with me. And that's nice. And that's the sacrifice. When I let go of this stuff, I let go of people wanting to be with me, and people just come and go throughout my life, and I, and I don't force anything and, and I just I'll see random people I'll see one person every you know it's, you, you don't have a best friend there's no best friends there's no there's none of that I see the people I live with and that's about it I see everybody but in little bits I, it's nice to indulge in this and have a connection with a woman I want a connection with Rebecca in that way but then I, it's like I single her out, and it's not that. It's not her. It's not. It's not. It seems like it. That's infatuation. I just, I'm interested in, in, in all things. And I want to find the balance in all things. Because I think that's more interesting than some ideal. So it's, it's I'm going to delve into all things, I believe. Well, that's extreme, because then like murder came into my mind. It's like, I'm just, I'm curious, but I'm not going to kill. I'm not going to hurt. I'm not going to hurt people, physically. And is that what sex is? It's, it's arguable. Seems like the woman's in pain. Okay. I, I've been very aware. Oh, oh. It was really interesting when, when the restaurant started to get packed, and I, I was saying it out loud that they're drawn to this. They're drawn to this, this chaos. They're drawn to this conflict in my mind because everybody has this conflict, balancing out open, genuine behavior with indulgence in the physical reality. And it's, hey man, that's the journey. At least that's what the journey is right now. See you.